in today's lecture we will be doing a problem which is related to helical gear here we have set of gears in which we will reduce the speed in two stages called double helical reduction gear here we have three shafts shaft a b and c shaft a is driven by a power source so we can say that it is the driver shaft for the gear mechanism upon it gear 2 is mounted and upon shaft b gear 3 is mounted both of them means 2 and 3 are meshed with each other shaft a or gear 2 is revolving with the speed 1700 rpm normal diametral pitch for gear 2 and 3 is 12 teeth per inch helical angle is 30 degree and the normal pressure angle is 20 degree upon shaft b we have another gear mounted as well which is gear 4 it is also a driving gear along with gear 2 upon shaft c we have a gear 5 mounted on it it has a driven gear and gear 3 is also a driven gear for gear 4 and 5 the normal diameter pitch is 8 teeth per inch helix angle is 25 and pressure angle is 20 the teeth on gear 2 are 12 on gear 3 it's 48 on gear 4 it is 16 and on gear 5 it is 36 now what do we have to find in this problem is that to find the direction of the thrust forces exerted on the shafts by the gears mounted on it another thing that we have to find is the speed and the direction of the shaft c and the center distance between the shafts means the distance between shaft a and b and shaft b and c this is the diagram of gearbox gear 2 is rotating counterclockwise direction it is meshed with gear 3 so it will rotate gear 3 in clockwise direction and since gear 4 is also mounted on the same shaft b so gear 4 will also rotate in clockwise direction and if you see gear 4 is meshed with gear 5 so gear 5 will rotate in anti-clockwise direction gear 5 is mounted on shaft c so shaft c will also rotate counterclockwise direction the other dimensions are also given in the diagram but we do not need to use these in our calculations to find out the direction of the thrust forces we will take help from this below diagram let me draw gear 2 and gear 3 gear 2 is rotating in anti-clockwise direction the diagram from which we will get help has two gears in the upper line to the right which are also rotating counterclockwise direction and the other two are rotating in clockwise direction which are not of our interest and in the lower line to the left it is also rotating in anti-clockwise direction then we have the second one is also not of our interest because it is rotating in clockwise direction the gear set to the extreme right in the bottom is rotating counterclockwise direction so it also suits our problem and the last one left is also not of our interest due to its motion in clockwise direction we have four gear sets which may possibly be suited to our problem gear 3 is right hand gear so wipe out the left hand gear sets gear 2 is below rotating in anti-clockwise direction and gear 3 is above which is right hand so this one is best suited to our problem so in the diagram this is how the force on the shaft b is represented so represent it on our own diagram as well what does this mean is that the force will be in this direction which is positive z direction that is why we use bearings here to cancel out its effect gear 3 is rotating in clockwise direction so draw the gear 3 and it is meshed with gear 2 like this now specify all those gear sets in the diagram where the above gear will be rotating in clockwise direction this can be used this cannot be used this can also be used because of its direction in clockwise and this one can also not be used no need to use these four gear sets we have only two options and if you look at to the gear 2 it is left hand so we are left with only one option this is how the diagram is represented in the diagram so write it in our own diagram as well which shows that the force will be in negative z direction now force is on gear 4 and 5 gear 4 is rotating in clockwise direction because both gear 3 and 4 are mounted on the same shaft b gear 4 is driving gear for the gear 5 so specify all those driving gears which are rotating in clockwise direction so this can be 
and this one can also be solution to our problem to draw the forces direction means thrust forces direction gear 5 is right hand gear so this is our required diagram the force here is like this so is on our diagram which shows that it is means the thrust force will be in negative z direction now for gear 4 gear 5 is rotating in anti-clockwise direction and is meshed with the gear 4 like this these four can be used for our problem since the diagrams with the tick have anti-clockwise direction so it can be used and with the cross they cannot be used because they have clockwise rotation we have these two options and since gear 4 is left hand gear so we have this option we clicked this force on our diagram so what it shows is that the thrust force will be in positive z direction we know that speed of the last divided by speed of the first is equal to uh, number of teeth of the driver divided by number of teeth of the driven so which is equal to n2 n2 n4 divided by n3 n2 n5 so rearranging for the speed of the last gear n2 is 12 n4 is 16 n3 is 48 n5 is 36 so putting these values we will get and similarly putting speed of the first gear as well we will get 77.78 .78 rpm and anti-clockwise direction we have already discussed the direction for the central distances let's draw the shaft a shaft b and shaft c and upon them draw gear 2 on shaft a gear 3 on shaft b gear 4 on shaft b and gear 5 on shaft c so we have to find the distance between shaft a and b and distance between c and b so the sum of radius of gear 2 and gear 3 is equal to the center distance between shaft a and b so we should have either diameter or radius of gear 2 and diameter or radius of gear 3 we know that d is equal to m n to n where m is module replace it by p which is in turn equals to n divided by p cos pi n equals to 12 p is equal to 12 and pi equals to 30 degree so putting these values we will get d equals to 1.155 inch for gear 3 the helix angle and the module or diametral pitch is same only teeth are different which are 48 so replacing 12 by 48 we will get d3 is equal to 4.619 we have found it out d3 and d2 now if we sum both of them we will get some extra part along with the central distance between shaft a and b so if we sum them and divide them we will get the required answer that is the distance between shaft a and b so let's sum them and divide it by 2 we will get 2.887 now let's find out dp4 p means pinion or driver and 4 is 16 p is 8 pi equals to 25 so putting it in formula n divided by p cos pi we will get 2.207 inch for gear 5 n equals to 36 p is the same 8 and pi is also the same 25 so putting it in the formula n divided by p cos pi 494.965 that is equal to d5 so we find it out d5 and d4 by summing up these two values we will get some extra portion means one radius of gear 5 and one radius of gear 4 so to get the distance between shaft b and c first of all sum up the diameters of gear 5 and gear 4 and then divide it by 2 so by adding their diameter we will get 7.172 and dividing it by 2 we will get 3.586 inches which is the required center distance between shaft b and c